In this week's video, we travel to Seligman, Arizona and meet our new friend Pete, who lets me use his A-liner for an inspection video. We didn't have the greatest weather, but we had a great time creating a resource that I hope helps future A-liner owners. Join us in this brand new video from Golden Canine Campers. Hey guys, Daryl here. So in this week's video, I'm going to be inspecting an A-liner. So I've talked about my search, me and Nicole's search for an A-liner before, um, and I was fortunate enough to meet a guy on Instagram, his name's Pete, and he's letting me borrow his A-liner for a couple of hours so I can do an inspection video for it. And this is his A-liner right here. It's a Titanium 12, so it's the off-road version of the A-liners, so it's got these real, um, it's got these real beefy tires here. Um, and it's raised up a little bit higher than a normal A-liner is. And so, yeah, it's kind of designed for off-road. So, and it's got this really fancy paint job. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love this. This paint job is really cool. Hi everyone. So I'm doing this part of the video from home. So I was really nervous. It was basically the second time that I've been inside an A-liner and I was meeting Pete for the first time. So, I missed some things on the checklist and I want to go over those things to make inspecting your A-liner a little bit easier. So on with the inspection video. Let's go ahead and check the inside of the A-liner first. One of the things that I suggested that you bring, of course, is the actual checklist. So you can see that here. So we brought this checklist along um, and I brought a bunch of tools along as well to help me in my inspection of the A-liner. So let's look at what I've brought. So I've got the duct tape. I'm not sure why I brought that, but that's good for our tent because it's raining. I brought an infrared thermometer so that we can measure the temperature of the refrigerator as well as the propane, the heater, and, as well, and the air conditioner. We've got a voltage meter, so we can look at the voltage coming out of the battery. We've got, uh, so this is a receptacle tester and it actually does um, a GFCI. So it checks the GFCI to make sure that that's working properly. We have a leveler to make sure that the A-liner is level. We have a tire pressure meter so we can check the tire pressure before we take off with our A-liner. Got a torque wrench down here and finally we got a little mirror for checking around things. So I believe that is everything that we brought. Okay so now let's go ahead and start on our checklist. And our checklist is getting damp. <laughs> so, okay. Okay, so before we actually go into the trailer, we're going to check the steps just to make sure that sometimes people can forget to um, put away the steps <laughs> so they can cause the damage to the steps. So we want to make sure that the steps um, disengage and engage correctly. So I had put um, just a tip. I only have carpet on the top because if you put a second piece of carpet here, it won't fold over on itself oh. and close. So I only did the top step. Oh. And then those just fit in there like that. Okay. And then I'd use a bungee to, to secure it so it doesn't come out while you're driving. Oh, okay. But as so that. Yep. Okay, so one thing that a lot of A-liners have issues with is this door. So I'm not exactly sure why. I think it's a combination of all the um, kind of rubber sealing material, material that they use to um, try to keep it airtight. Maybe it's just because of so many of the moving parts. Could have to do with the frame and the materials and heat and cold and how it can expand and contract. But that's one of the really important things that you want to look at on your A-liner, new or used, is that to make sure that that door closes relatively easy without having to slam it and use a sledgehammer to close it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just practically one finger to open and yep. close it. Yep. 
Okay. I don't think it could get better than that. Nope. Um, and can we unlatch yeah. that to make sure that latches properly? properly? Yeah. So yeah. you also want to unlatch it just to make sure that that latch. And you'll do that when the top folds in. That's why you have to separate these. And then just uh, latch it together. Yep, and, and it, it latches it. Latches it really nicely. You're going to want to check around on the rubber seals just to make sure everything looks properly looks like it isn't kind of dry rotted there's no cracking um, this is one of the places where also potentially water um, condensation can get into the a-liner and so you'll want to make sure that so it's rain from the outside yeah. or spills from the inside yep I have noticed when it gets super cold this rubber gasket uh -huh. does shrink just a bit okay but that's just cold you know cold yeah. shrinks shrinks everything expands. yeah so so now we're gonna go inside oh can you close the door yep. turn on lights okay oh can you keep them off real quick i can keep them off so one of the things that you want to do in your a-liner now this kind of sucks because we're um we don't have a sunny day <laughs> so but one of the things you want to look at once you're in the A-liner is you want to look out the door to make sure that there's not too, not any light coming in. And you can see there's a little light coming in right here, um, but I think that might be actually kind of normal. But there's a little bit of a hole right there. That's where your pivot's on the hinge. Oh the yeah, 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 yeah. I see that. Yep. So you're gonna have gonna have a little bit same of on this side. same on that Let's side right there. But you can see, <laughs> that's really clear that you can see light coming in there and you can see light coming in on this other side. But if you look at the rest of the seal, how there is no sort of light coming in. And that's what you want to see because if you see light coming in, that means that air from the outside is definitely going to come inside the trailer. Okay. The other thing that you're going to want to look at is where the frame roof comes down and meets and you're going to want to look really closely to also ensure that you don't see a whole lot of gapping there and you see absolutely <laughs> no light coming in at all on this trailer. Um, so it is sealed up properly and this thing is not going to let any of that cold air in and that's exactly what you want to see. All right. so the next thing you want to do is look at the sliding windows and make sure that they open and close properly. Okay. This one opens fine but it has a hard time closing. It has a hard time closing? Yeah. So you can see where it that's kind of, as as it yeah, that's as far as it goes right there. Um, and then when you close it, Pete does say that sometimes it's a little bit difficult to close and lock. You said you can't lock it? Yeah, I just, I haven't messed with it. Okay. But uh, that one is, does give me trouble closing and locking. Okay. So this one does give them a little bit problems closing and locking. So that's one of the things that you want to check is and it could be because the another trailer that we had seen just the frame was kind of a little funny right here where it closed and it couldn't quite fit into the frame and we were able to get it in there but it just it took a little work to get it in there and with, that's how we locked it with force you can with force it. you can close yeah. it yep okay. same thing on this side yeah so it opens okay. all the way okay and then i think this one closes really easy. yeah that one closes easily Smooth. Yep. Okay. Well, this one's really good. Okay. Just keep it closed because it's raining outside. <laughs> okay. So you want to check the windows to make sure that they both open and close properly. Really what you'd like to do when you're inspecting the A-liner is you want to check both the water tank and the water pump to make sure that there is no sort of leak in that water tank and in the water pump. Now, how you would typically do that is 
the owner would fill up that water tank, you would turn on the water pump, and then you would run the water to make sure that there is no sort of leak. You'd also want to, as part of that, you'd want to open up this storage area underneath the bed, and you'd want to look underneath there, and you'd want to look at that water tank to make sure that there's no sort of leaks that are going on in that area and by the water pump, because that's where those are located. Um, you can turn on the water. So with the water, with you using the water pump, you would turn on the water and you would inspect that entire area. You would open up that whole area and you would check for any sort of water leaks. The other thing you'd want to do is with light, go underneath the sink and to make sure that there doesn't look like there was any sort of real shiny spots where there could have been some water leaks, maybe the owner just kind of cleaned up, um, that there is no sort of soft wood underneath here where it looks like there was any sort of um, kind of water sitting for a while. Um, so you really want to check underneath this entire area um, to make sure that it looks like there are no sort of uh, plumbing issues at all um, with this A-liner. So the next thing you'd really want to do is you'd want to turn off the water pump. You'd want to have them hook up to the city water connection and then you'd want to run the water again using the city water connection and to make sure that under those circumstances that you wouldn't have any sort of water leaks going on. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is check the operation of the air conditioning unit. So we're pretty fortunate in that it's not very hot here, um, so it should be bull blowing cold air without any problems. But what you're going to want to do, you could feel cold air, but it would be really nice for you to have some sort of kind of a thermometer deal um, where you could check the actual temperature of that air coming out. So that's what we're going to do. And we'll turn this on. And now we'll check the temperature. And it's 58 degrees that's coming out of that unit. Let me kind of move it away. And you can see the ambient air temperature is 67 degrees over here. Um, the actual temperature of the unit now is 57 degrees, 56 degrees. So it is 10 degrees cooler than the ambient air. So that's actually, I don't think it's too bad. Oh, and now it's dropping even more. So that's 54 degrees. So maybe we'll let that run for a little bit. Yeah, I just turned it on so give it time to get cooling and we'll see what it gets down to. So right now it's at 52 degrees. So these side AC units are actually on these A-liners are actually really, really good. Okay. Okay, so the other thing you want to do is check the check the furnace. Um, so we're gonna use our handy dandy little infrared temperature reader and we'll get that running. Whoa. I guess it's going way deep into the um I wonder if it's going way yeah. deep into the... Um, but even having your hand, I mean, that's not comfortable. That gets really warm. Yes. But it heats the area. It heats the entire interior. And I've had it down 30 degrees outside and it's been able to stay very warm inside. Well, it's definitely warm. Yeah. So, yeah, we don't have to worry about that. Inside of the furnace, it's 100 and 220 degrees. Yeah, so we're good. Right. We're <laughs> cranking some heat. <laughs> Let's turn that off now. Um, so let's look at the fridge. Yep. So you can see this is 48 degrees, 39 degrees right there. The 38 degrees. The floor is 46 degrees. Interesting. Well, you got the furnace kind of blowing in yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So you can see that it's definitely, definitely chilled. What would be the best way to to test the fridge. I mean, obviously the fridge works, um, but you would want to test the fridge both on battery power from the 12 volt, you'd want to test it from on 120 volt, you'd want to test it with the propane. Right. Propane would probably be the coldest. I guess my best advice for this is obviously have the owner probably hook it up to a 120 volt. Um, 
um, and you know ask ask the owner to put some water um, into the the cooler and um, when you get there you know check to make sure that the water you know that the water is at the appropriate temperature you know if it's been in there for you know 12 hours it should be fine you know I, I just don't exactly know how to best test for those three energy sources to make sure that it works correctly. Um, it doesn't seem like there's an easy way of being able to well, do that. So now we're going to test the fan. So you would unlock it, right? It has a lock feature. So you unlock it, then you can manually crank it open. And then you have a switch. You can have air flow in, or you have air flow out, and you have three speeds. So that's low, and then you can really... Wow, it's fast. So, and this one is uh, pulling air out. Okay. Exhaust. Okay. So, and you can do the same thing in reverse, hit the switch and you can draw air in. Okay. If it's cooler outside and you want to cool the interior, then you can draw air in. Okay. I like to open up a window, have it exhaust out, and you pull air through the camper and out. Oh, nice. The heat, the warm air. So that's it, simple as that. Okay. Then you can close it up, right? So manually close it. Once it's secure and closed, you hit the lock, and that keeps the top from flying off while traveling. Okay. Is that on your checklist? That's it. Okay. So the two burner stove runs on propane. Each are independently controlled with the valves here and use a lighter and you can adjust low or high each one. Turn it up high. You can adjust if you want to adjust your cooking temperature. And it's pretty simple as that. Okay. That's it for cooking. Do you ever use use the um it, stove well, inside? Every morning. And really? You know what's nice? Because you can get out of bed, put a little water in your <laughs> cup. And then you can get the coffee started <laughs> all while you're inside. <laughs> Deal with the cooking outside, whatever, but get that coffee started first thing. The um, fire extinguisher that the pressure pre that the pressure is appropriate. So the next thing you're going to want to do is check all the cabinet doors within your A liner, just to make sure that they open and close appropriately. Check all the hardware. <laughs> This one's here. Looks good. This one has the drawers in the bottom. This one has big storage space. If they loosen up, I frequently will uh, like squeeze these together to get more tension, make a harder close. Oh, so when nice. You're traveling, things don't fall out. Oh, nice. Okay. Good tip. The next thing you're going to want to do is check the flooring. So. You want to make sure that it doesn't look like there's been any sort of leaks. You want to make sure that it doesn't look like there's any sort of soft spots. Sometimes people when they're inspecting trailers will kind of stomp just to make sure everything looks like there's nothing, no sort of soft spots. Luckily we don't have much floor to check <laughs> on the eight liners. <laughs> you can just dump it and you're done. Okay, so it looks like it's good. Okay, so the other thing you want to check is make sure that all the lights work appropriately. Okay, that's good. And same thing in the back. Same thing in the back. Same fixture, LED lights. Okay. On off switch. Now we need to look at the torsion springs and there's four of them. So these assist with the opening and closing of the A-liner. And basically you're kind of looking to make sure that, um, it, it, you know, I guess you don't want to see any sort of rust on there. You don't want to see any sort of, um, looks like they're not aligned properly. Um, the fitment. So you can look at, make sure that they're all relatively consistent. And you can see that this spring right here, it goes up to the top right here. And this is where the, um, this is. So it just goes right to that box. 
the this box right here. Yeah, the end is secured in that box. And then the other end is secured way down here, and you can't you can't actually see it because it goes underneath the frame. Um, that looks good. And let me show these. Show these back here. And then on this side. Okay. So these look good. Um, really what you'd really want to do is both raise and lower the roofs and make sure that it doesn't feel like it takes too much effort to raise your A-liner roof. And if it feels like there's a little bit too much effort, then it could be that the torsion springs are kind of losing their springiness. And so you want to make sure that and it's kind of hard if you've never actually opened or closed one. Um, we'll close it tomorrow. Okay. On our, on okay. Our way out. We'll close okay. it up tomorrow. Okay. So we'll see. We'll get to see that um, tomorrow. Okay. okay. You're going to want to look at the curtains on the A-liners. And the reason you're going to want to do that is just make sure that they close and they still fit properly. Yeah. Um, do yours so still close? Oh, yeah. So yeah. got the snaps. Snap there. Snap there. And then all the Velcro attachments. Okay. Okay. So the reason why you're going to want to do that is because this A-liner specifically says not to wash these and people ignore those and wash them anyway and then they shrink <laughs> and then they can't close anymore. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that you yeah, want to check. This one down and okay. You okay. Since it's a small one, it's easy. They secure with Velcro. So it rolls down yep. and it'll snap and snap. Yep. So Just that's, like that. That's perfect. Um, the other thing you're want, going to want to do is just check the cushions. So a lot of times you can check, you can determine a lot about an RV or an A-liner just by the condition of the um, cushions to see if they look like they have a whole lot of wear in them, um, if they're somewhat frayed, if um, kind of looks like they're going to start falling apart, um, looks like their firmness has kind of lost it, although I would probably like them to be less firm. <laughs> but but um, yeah, so ch just check the condition of the cushions to make sure that they're, they're good. Um, you're also probably going to want to make the bed um, on, on both ends just to make sure that you're familiar with that and to make sure that you don't have any problems making the beds. If your A-liner comes with dormers, um, you're going to want to condition check the condition of the dormers. So you're going to want to make sure it doesn't look like they're frayed at all. It, making sure that the zippers uh, all open and close properly. Okay. Making sure that the the screens aren't torn making sure that there's um, no sort of damage to the material or it looks like the material is uh, torn in any sort of way. Water spills or stains. Water stains, yeah. any th sort of things like that. You also want to check the canvas material just for fit, just to make sure it looks like it's still nice and tight, that there's not any sort of excessive sagging. Um, on the dormers materials. Um, once again, making sure that there's no sort of tails, uh, tears, any sort of mildew kind of stains, um, those sorts of things that can happen in on canvas material. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna uh, check the battery, the 12 volt battery. So we're basically gonna unplug um, the A-liner for a second from shore power, and we're gonna check to make sure that the battery is um, providing power, 12 volt power, um, to the um, to the parts of the trailer that work off the 12 volt. And so primarily that would be the, the propane, that would be uh, the internal lights. Um, so the lights are gonna be powered off the 12 volt. Uh, the propane could be powered off the 12 volt. The fantastic fan would be powered off the 12 volt. Um, and your USB uh, connections would be powered off the 12 volt. Um, so you're gonna wanna check to make sure all of those things still work. Okay, so we're checking with the 12 volt, we're checking to make sure that the fantastic fan works, which it does. Um, the propane, the furnace would work. Um, we checked the phone on the USB connection. 
that worked and the, lights. and the internal lights worked and so yeah everything works works off of 12 volts so i'll go ahead and turn those off we'll plug back in and then we're going to check again okay because then we're going to check to make sure that the um, converter is working right okay so it converts from 120 volt to 12 volt sure okay sure so we're good all right so now we're going to check the battery to make sure that it's got sufficient charge and we're using a voltmeter and it's reading 12.6 volts which means it's pretty fully charged i think 12 that's pretty full fully 12 6 12 8 something like that's fully fully charged yeah. so it looks like we're good on the battery okay so now we're plugged back in and basically the lights still work the fantastic fan still works the usb power will still work and we'll check the outlet and we can check the outlet Okay, and so now we're checking the outlet and we've got two orange lights, which means the outlet is kind of correctly set up. Um, and we could also check the um, GFCI just by hitting that red button. Okay. Yeah, so there's a, so that's a trip, right? Okay. And then we'll reset it. Okay. And then the lights go out. So when I were in business. Okay. Right? Yep. Both of them. Okay. okay. We're good. Both connectors. Both both power plugs. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so by having the 120 volt on and testing the 120 volt, obviously that worked like it should. And then also the 12 volt works. So that means the converter converting from 120 volt to 12 volt, that is working correctly as well. And so the other point that Pete made is um, we've been using the battery or and we've been plugged in for over a day um, and the battery hasn't been drained at all. And the reason for that is because as we're plugged in, it's sending power back to the battery, keeping the battery charged up, which is really cool. And it's working just like it should. Okay, so Pete was just reminding me um, that one of the things with A-liners, or really any sort of travel trailer, but probably even more so with the A-liners because of the metal that's, that's up here, um, is you will get a lot of condensation. So as, um, as the temperature between the outside air and the inside air changes, you will get condensation that will develop. Um, and so often um, the condensation will build up on the metal, on those metal hinges. Um, and sometimes it will run down the walls. And so one of the things that you do to help with that is by using the fantastic fan to take that inside air and then bring it outside by using the windows to open up to let that inside air go back to the outside. So that helps with condensation, but it's one of the things that you need to pay really close attention to when you're looking at your A-liner is you need to look at the walls to make sure that there isn't any sort of bubbling on the walls that looks like where um, water got in, water intruded on, into that area um, which is going to cause some long-term problems with your A-liner. So pay very close attention to these walls to make sure that there's no sort of peeling, no sort of bubbling going on, which indicates that they've had some water intrusion in their trailer. So in regards to the list of tools to bring, uh, one of the reasons why I suggested duct tape was if you are using a wireless brake controller, the body of the brake controller needs to be mounted to the frame. So what you can do is instead of permanently mounting it to the frame, you could temporarily mount it to the frame just by using the duct tape. So that's the reason I kind of brought that. So the other thing that I would recommend that you bring is a 12 volt and USB tester. Depending on the year of the A-liner, that 12 volt connection could be an actual kind of cigarette lighter type connection, or it could be a USB type connection. So you really wanna bring both with you so you can check that outlet. 
So on the checklist, I provided a list of items that you should ask the owner to do in preparation for you coming to inspect the trailer. So you really want to have both water and power available so you can test those items. The other thing you're going to want to do is make sure that they have a full battery and propane available so you can check those items as well. The other thing that you're going to want to do is ask the owner to make sure that they bring all of their A-liner documentation, the list of maintenance that they've done with a trailer, as well as the title so you have those things to check. You'll notice when I was inspecting the A-liner, there was a lot of personal items in the trailer that made it sort of difficult to inspect. So you really wanna ask the owner to remove all of the personal items so you have total access to the entire trailer for inspecting. So for the inside inspection, I kind of wavered a little bit on the torsion springs and what kinds of things that you should be looking for. So first of all, you should be looking for any sort of rust on the springs. That's gonna tell you right away that there's been some moisture in that area. You also want to look at if there's signs of any sort of moisture getting inside of the trailer and especially inside the box where those springs reside. So I mentioned that there's kind of a straight connection to each of the box where um, it connects to your A-liner. Basically there's plywood that's surrounding that box or that box is made of and if moisture gets in the into that area it's likely that that area is compromised and those springs could then break through and go outside of the trailer. A-Liner has made some changes in the last two years in regards to that area. So they've had some brackets in place to help those springs from twisting. If they do twist, they can fail actually inside of the trailer and that could make that very dangerous to the occupants. So here are some pictures of A-liners, springs, torsion springs that have failed. And so you'll notice how some of the times the springs break through the outside of the trailer, as well as twist and break through inside of the trailer. So yeah, it's not only dangerous, but it is a very expensive repair to the box. And so you really wanna make sure that that couldn't happen to your A-liner. So you really wanna make sure that no moisture has got into that area, which compromises those boxes and the structural integrity, making it more likely those, for those springs to fail and break outside of the trailer or twist and break inside. So in regards to the plumbing inspection, one of the things that I missed is you really want the owner to fill the fresh water tank as you're there. And as they're filling that fresh water tank, you really want to look at that filler port from inside of the trailer and make sure that there is no sort of leaking going on as they're filling that filler port. You're also going to want to look at the water tank as they're filling it just to make sure that no moisture is happening, which indicates that there is some sort of leak within that area. That filler port has plagued a number of owners that have had to get that thing repaired. So you really want to check that. You're also going to want to pay attention to that city water connection. So as they connect that and as it starts filling the plumbing within the A-liner with water and as it's filling the hot water tank as you turn on the hot water heater, you want to inspect the inside of the A-liner, all of the cabinets, just to make sure that no leaking is going on. So although plumbing can be relatively inexpensive to repair, what isn't always inexpensive to repair is the water damage that is done by plumbing problems. So if water gets on the floor and causes that floor to fail to make that floor weak, it can also climb the walls and cause problems with the walls. And you really don't want to deal with plumbing problems when you get your new or used A-liner. So we weren't able to do a test on the propane detector he had problems with that and he basically removed it. So you're gonna really wanna do that for any used trailer that you purchase. So one of the ways of testing that propane connector is to get a long cigarette lighter and light it and blow the flame out. So as you continue to test on that butane, you're gonna wanna put 
right, that right next to the detector and it should alarm that there's butane that is being leaked into the system. So as you're checking the cabinet hardware, one of the things about A-liners is the cabinets actually add structural integrity to the trailer. So some owners actually remodel it and remove those or replace it with something else. And that can potentially cause problems with the structural integrity of those walls. And so really, as you're looking at the cabinets, go behind the cabinets and just make sure where the connection point from the cabinet to the wall, make sure it's not loose in any sort of way and make sure there's no bulging at that area, which could give you an indication that there is some structural integrity problems, perhaps because the cabinet isn't stable and the A-liner has been compromised. Okay, so let's now go outside and check underneath the A-liner. So yeah, now it's time to get a little dirty and a little gritty. Okay. So we are now underneath the A-liner. So what we really are gonna want to do is look at the entire box to make sure that nothing has been compromised. We're gonna look at the stabilizers, first of all, and we wanna make sure that they don't look dented and that where they attach to the frame, it doesn't look like there is any sagging and then the gap between the stabilizer and the frame is relatively consistent. You're going to want to check the frame to make sure that the frame looks level and it looks like that there's no sort of sagging on the frame. Okay, you're going to want to look underneath. Here's the drain valve for the fresh water tank right here. If there was any sort of significant leaking in here, you could probably see that from underneath. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't see anything that looks like it's too discolored. Um, you're gonna to wanna to look at the propane lines here um, to make sure that you don't see any sort of kinks in the propane lines, making sure that that looks like there's been no damage to it. You're gonna to wanna to look at the torsion axles Oh. which are these guys right here. Oh. Okay, now the way that axle works is that torsion axle should actually be at a little bit of an angle. Okay, so it shouldn't be level. It should be down at an angle because that's how it's going to level the trailer out as it's moving. So you don't want to have those you are looking for an angle on each of those axles. You can also look at the electric brakes to make sure that they look like they're okay, that there's no sort of oil that's coming out of the brakes, any sort of leaks that are coming out of the brakes. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure that the axle, that the, of course, all, all the bolts are in place on the axles. Um, you're gonna wanna look at this part of the axle over here that goes from one wheel to the other wheel to make sure that that axle looks parallel and that it hasn't been damaged, that it's not sagging, that it looks like it hasn't been overloaded. You're gonna wanna look at this axle at a little bit of an angle. So you'll see it's sagging, or it's not sagging, but it's down at an angle a little bit. You can look at the electric brakes to make sure that doesn't look like there's any sort of leaking or anything, um, any sort of oil coming out of the brakes. Look through the entire floor just to make sure it looks like everything is sealed up and tight and that there's been no leaks. Look at that entire frame again, sort of bottoming out doesn't look like that's happened. You could look at this area over here on this part of the bumper for any bottom, bottoming out. And everything looks pretty good underneath this trailer. No sort of cobwebs, no sort of um, any sort of leaking, any sort of water leaking, water stains. Um, 
no damage underneath. So yeah, everything looks really good underneath the trailer. Yeah, so when I was underneath the trailer, one of the other things that we were supposed to do is kind of look for excessive rust um, where it looks like that the metal parts were rusty. That could also be a sign that it just wasn't taken care of um, and it was in the rain a lot. So you wanna look for excessive rust on basically any sort of metal parts. So I talked about this a little when I was underneath the trailer and kind of checking for water damage, but that's one opportunity that you have to really look at that area to see if water has potentially leaked. And so you really wanna look at all four corners of the A-liner just to make sure that you know, a lot of times condensation can develop in those areas and it will leak out the corners. You also want to really look at both the water heater tank as well as the fresh water tank and look at those areas just to make sure that there's no signs of leaking, that it doesn't look like the wood has been compromised and it's soft. And so, yeah, that's a really good time to take a really good look at those floors. The other thing that you want to do when you're underneath the trailer is look for signs that the trailer has been sitting for a while. You want to look for spider webs or bug nests or those kinds of things which could give you an indication that yeah the trailer really has just been sitting. And somewhat similar to a car because the A-liner has so many new moving parts, you know the axles, the wheels, the brakes. It's really intended, the A-liner is intended to be used as well as regular RVs. And so, yeah, if the A-liner isn't used and sits for a while, that can potentially cause some serious maintenance issues. So this is also a really good time to ask the owner about axle maintenance. So you should be repacking those bearings as well as getting the brakes inspected probably once a year, depending on how often you use the trailer and how many miles you put on it. So yeah, ask the owner, hey, so what do you do in regards to servicing the axles? And see what he says. All right, so let's get out from underneath the trailer and let's just check the outside of the trailer. Okay, so you wanna go around the entire trailer um, and all of the weather stripping, all of the seals that go around the trailer, you wanna make sure that all, all looks like it's in good shape, okay? You don't want any sort of cracking, um, any sort of areas where it looks like water might go into the trailer, um, especially under the AC, because this is where water um, will come out of the AC. Check that. Check the door. Nicely sealed. Good, looks good. You also want to check the frame just to make sure that the frame doesn't look like anything is bulging out. In an accident or maybe sometime not leveled or you know any sort of compromise um, to the, um, um, sometimes like maybe you have a blood or something like that and the wheel wells could cause some problems. Um, but any sort of any sort of damage to the frame just to make sure to check for that so it's really important that you check the front portion of the frame as well to also make sure that you're not seeing any sort of bulging but we were drastically just inside and the springs looked in really good shape um, but you can see right here we have a little bit of potentially um, um, water potentially getting in through there. That would be something that you would want to look at, maybe sealing that up a little bit. So anywhere where they have those seals in place, you want to go through the entire thing because anywhere where water can get in, if you are in a place where there's a lot of rain, if you're driving in rain, water can get in there and then it can compromise the frame and compromise the integrity of the trailer. So what you're looking for is that it's firm, that it's firm, but yet it's somewhat pliable. 
You but can see uh, this, 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 this guy's coming out. Yeah, so I don't know if that's temperature related and it's flexing or what, but that's going to need some attention to look at. Okay, so now we're looking at the exterior shower. Okay, so Pete's turned the pump on for me so we can check the cold water to make sure that the cold water is working. Oop, there we go. And that's working fine. Cold water. And it's your typical RV with the on and off switch so you can save water while you're using it. Oh, nice. I and didn't know about that. Then the hot water side. Not really oh, the hot water here is not on? Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's a little warm. Okay. Okay. Yep, there we go. So we got a little bit of warm water there, and so we're good to go. All right, so now let's look at the front. And um, here we have our battery connection, and then we have our propane connection. So all you're kind of doing here is just kind of making sure everything um, looks like it doesn't need any maintenance. You'd probably want to lower and raise the tongue jack um, just to make sure that it doesn't look like it's catching. Okay, so now we're looking at the bumper. So sometimes the A-liners have a little bit of an issue, especially if people tend to mount something on their bumper. Um, it's not all that heavy duty and really made for that. Okay. What you're gonna look for is that the weld on the upper part of the back of the bumper, which connects to the frame, doesn't look like it's been compromised. There are owners who put bike racks or storage boxes on the back of the bumper, and the welding is not sufficient to handle that weight. Uh, one of the things they do say, though, is that sometimes when people back up, people are backing up with their trailer, that sometimes this is very close, the tire is very close to the actual the actual box and sometimes people back up and will hit their tire and it will damage the box here a little bit and so you need to look at this to see if that's um, if that has potentially happened here's the storage compartment and so one of the things that you want to do especially in the corners is kind of look for potential leak spots um, so you could look in this corner right over here, kind of look through this whole storage area. This is also where the water heater and the water tank is located. It's actually located on the other side. Um, but you wanna check for any sort of potential leaking points right down here. Um, and you can tell that there's no, there's never been any sort of leaks down here. The wood is all the same color. It doesn't look like there's any sort of soft spots in it. You want to also want to look at to make sure that the um, the storage box, the storage lid, looks like it's relatively well sealed, and that there is no kind of gaps in it. So, it's a good time with the rain that we're having. You see the water dripping. Yeah, yeah. You can see it's a full rubber seal. Yep, yep, oh, yep. Oh no, that's that's really that's a really good point. So. Um, so, <laughs> so if it's going to leak, it's going to leak now. <laughs> so yeah, you can see the water dripping down and you can see how it's kind of moved away a little bit from um, the actual frame of the trailer. The, the compartment's made with a rubber seal that goes all the way around and seals the door yep. from the outside. So, and it's got the magnetic catch at the top. That's cool. Well, that's that's kind of a really nice, nice little feature. Yep. Yeah. That's really nice. You can see how there's not anything really sticking out here. Everything is really nicely sealed. Everything closed really easily without any sort of problems. And you're going to want to check basically both um, storage boxes to make sure that they're similar and that they open and close the same way. So we're just looking through here as well, just to make sure everything looks good, making sure there's no potential leaks coming through here. Everything looks really good. And you can see that um, the rubber seals look very good. There's no problem, there's no sort of um, dry rot or anything going on, so that all looks good. Okay, so the other thing we're, we're going to do is we're gonna check the seven-way power cable. Uh, the power connection to the tow vehicle. So basically you're just looking here to see if there's any sort of kind of potential burns where maybe it's short circuited or something like that, that it wasn't dragged on the ground so that it doesn't have any bad scuff marks on it. It looks like it's been dragged on the highway. Um, but this one looks really good. 
All right, so one of the things that we need to look at is the tires. Um, this is an unusual tire for an A-liner. Typically, you've got just regular RV kind of tires on an A-liner. So on this one, we're <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do a penny test <laughs> to check for tread depth. But you might want to get something to measure the tread um, as you're looking for it. What you might be wanting to look at is on the inside of the tire. If the trailer has ever been overloaded or if there was any sort of balance issues, you might get some uneven wear, especially if it was overloaded on the inside of the tire. And so if you do notice any sort of uneven tread wear, that's a potential problem. The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is look at the manufacturer's date of the tires and if they don't all match. So something interesting and something Pete, <laughs> Pete, Pete is now aware of is so that the both of his tires were built on the 14th week of, and you can see that here, that's the dot code. So that's the 14th week of 2020. Um, but his spare tire was actually in the second week, I think, of 2018. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. I don't know if that's a standard thing that they do, um, but yeah, that's well, kind of interesting. Um, but these tires look in, in great shape. They still got a lot of tread on them. Uh, so we're, even we're wear, yeah, like even. The yearly axle maintenance yep. to repack the bearings and adjust the brakes. Yeah, and so that's the other thing that you want to do is you want to ask the owner um, what they do as far as maintenance on their axles. That's a good habit before every trip to check the lug torque and air yep. pressure. Yep, so. yep, yep. All right, the other thing that you want to do is pay close attention to the wheel wells. You want to make sure that it doesn't look like the wheel wells are bent at all, that are deformed at all, because that potentially means that there was a blowout on the, um, on the tire. Um, and that blowout can be pretty explosive and can actually cause cause problems, obviously with with wheel well, but also the frame as well, because the frame or the um, the structure of the A liner is part of that. And so you want to check both sides to make sure it looks like those wheel wells haven't been damaged at all. Okay, and we'll check this side. This side looks good. All right. So unfortunately, during this part of the inspection, my camera failed. It was the first time that I was really making use of my iPhone 14 camera. And yeah, I did something. It was probably user error, but basically during the parts that I missed, I'm going to be doing uh, voiceovers and then adding images to help you with the inspection of those areas. So you're also going to want to check the shore power connection of the A-liner. Look at that connector just to make sure that it doesn't look like it's been damaged in any sort of way. You're going to want to make that connection yourself and twist it to make sure that it serves securely connects. You're also going to want to use the locking ring to, and screw that in to make sure that that hasn't been damaged in any sort of way and making sure that that kind of locks down uh, the power connection. You should also know that the owner isn't likely to have 30 amp service available when you're doing the inspection, but I had mentioned that you should have power available. They should have some sort of pigtail adapter to adapt that 30 amp service to 20 or 15 amp service that's available. Finally, you're gonna to wanna to ask the owner what kinds of precautions they take as they're connecting their A-liner to campground electrical systems. Those systems are known for having dirty power and you really want to have a good surge protector in place to protect the A-liner electrical systems in the electrical box. So yeah, ask that question of the A-liner owner just to make sure. All right, so here's an image of the filler port for the freshwater tank. You're really going to want to have the owner make sure that they fill that water tank and you're gonna to wanna to look at that port very closely to make sure it's sealed properly. As the owner goes ahead and fills that up, make sure it isn't leaking from inside the trailer at all. You're also gonna to wanna to look for any sort of signs of green stuff, some nasty stuff that doesn't look like they should be there. You could look both inside of the port, kind of with the flashlight, as well as look outside the port. You also wanna take a really good sniff of that port just to make sure that 
There's no sort of strange smells, any sort of mildew smells, stale water smells. That really shouldn't be there. Finally, you're gonna to wanna to ask the owner how often that they use that tank and what sort of maintenance that they do to that tank. So they should be winterizing it, they should be sterilizing it occasionally, ask them how often they do so. And they should be emptying those water tanks at the end of each camping trip. All right, so now we're looking at the city water connection point. So you're gonna to wanna to put a hose on there. Uh, the owner should have a hose and make sure that it secures as it should, as the owner provides water and turns on the water for that city water connection point, make sure outside that it isn't leaking at all. And as I mentioned before, um, as they hook that up, you're gonna wanna go inside and open up that storage area to make sure that as it's filling up, that there is no sort of water leaks. The other thing you're gonna wanna ask the owner is how often they use it. So they do, do they often use that city water connection at campsites? And if they do, what kinds of precautions do they take as they're doing so? So do they have a pressure regulator in place before they connect the city water? That's really important to ensure that your A-liner plumbing doesn't get damaged from a, a lot of high pressure at a campsite. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is look at the water heater. So you're gonna to wanna to open up that vent and take a really good look at that water heater. Does it look like there was any sort of leaks in that area? You're gonna to wanna to check the plumbing to make sure that it doesn't look like any sort of leaks are happening. You're gonna to wanna to check for bugs, any sort of spider webs, any sort of bug nest, which would give you an indication that they really didn't take care of that area. Look for any potential rust in that area, which could also give you an indication that there were some leaks. You'll probably see some sort of rust on the anode rod as that's one of its major jobs, but you wanna ask the owner, how often do you replace that on a rod? Have you done so already? So typically there's a maintenance interval of replacing those anode rods every three to five years. All right, so the next thing we need to do is check the refrigerator. So you're gonna to want to open the vents for both the upper part and the lower part of that fridge. For the upper part, you wanna check for any sort of maintenance issues. So once again, are there any bug nests in there, spider webs? Um, you also want to look really closely at the at the plumbing for the fridge and the connection points for that fridge where the connectors connect and look for any sort of signs of yellow staining. If there is yellow staining, that typically is an indication that you've had some sort of a leak in the refrigerator plumbing system. When you're looking at the lower vent, you also want to look for any sort of maintenance issues. Also look for that yellow staining and take a good sniff of both of those areas. If the refrigerator is leaking in any sort of way, typically there would be some sort of an ammonia smell. So typically if you have a Ranger 12 or a Classic or any of the upper versions of the A-liner, it would have a three-way refrigerator. I think recently in the last couple of years, those haven't been available only two-way, but if you have three-way, make sure you checked all the power sources. So the owner is likely connected to 120 volt. So check to make sure that refrigerator is cool. And then you're gonna to wanna to switch to the other power sources. So you'd wanna to switch to the 12 volt and you'd wanna to switch to propane. Now the propane can be very tricky to get running. And so you wanna make sure that you ask the owner how to do that. Make sure you get familiar with changing the power sources. And for the propane, make sure you're familiar with that igniting process and make sure that you can actually ignite it and it's running off of propane. My buddy Pete, who's helping me with this inspection, he had a bad igniter and so he couldn't actually use the propane. So he had to get that fixed under warranty. So yeah, make sure that that works as it should. So one of the things we missed is raising and lowering the tongue jack. So you wanna take a really good look. Make sure that it's a smooth operation as it's raised and lowered and that there's no sort of binding. You also want to do so yourself just to make sure that you can do it and it doesn't seem like it's too difficult to do. You want to do the same thing on the stabilizers. So most A-liners nowadays come with four stabilizers, but in the past sometimes they only came with two, two stabilizers. So you want to do the same thing on the stabilizers. Go ahead and raise them and lower them just to make sure that you're familiar with that operation as well as it's not too difficult and there's no binding. All right, so one of the most important things to do is to raise and lower the roof and the walls of the A-liner multiple times. 
you really want to make sure that it isn't all that difficult to raise and lower the roof of the A-liner. That could indicate a problem with the stabilizers, maybe that the stabilizers uh, don't have the appropriate tension anymore, uh, maybe that the bungee cord isn't working as it should. So both the bungee cord and the springs really help with both the raising and lowering of the A-liner roof. You're going to want to make sure as you bring the walls together to make sure that as you latch it, that it latches as it should, that it doesn't look like it's too difficult and that it fits right. You're going to want to look inside the A-liner to make sure that the walls and the roof meet correctly, that it doesn't look like any lights coming in to make sure that that fitment's correct. So that's really one of the most important things that you need to do as you're looking at your A-liner. Okay, so if things are going pretty well with the inspection, there's no major red flags, or if you have noticed something and you documented it, it's giving you a little bit of leverage for maybe lowering the price of the A-liner. But if you're kind of considering purchasing, you really want to take a road test for the A-liner. So you're going to want to connect the A-liner to your hitch ball. Now you should have already got the required hitch ball to make sure that that ball is at the appropriate height for the A-liner. After you've got it hitched up, you're also going to want to connect the seven pin connector from your tow vehicle into the A-liner. So you want to make sure that all of the running lights are on, that the brake lights work as they should, that the turn signals work as they should. So yeah, just make sure that that seven pin connector is working like it's supposed to. All right, so now it's time to use some more tools. So we're going to check the lug nuts just to make sure that they're torqued at 100 pounds. You're going to want to check the tire pressure to make sure that that's at 60 pounds. And after that, you're going to want to start towing that A-liner. So as you're towing it, you need to pay really close attention to make sure that the A-liner tracks right behind your tow vehicle, that there's no sort of strange vibrations, that it isn't kind of wobbling back and forth. And so, yeah, you want to make sure that everything looks like and feels like that A-liner is ready to be towed. All right, so the next thing that we're going to want to do is test both the wired or wireless brake controller. If you're brand new to towing, this is really important that you get the settings right. Maybe the owner can help you with the settings just to make sure that that brake controller is set up appropriately for towing. But as you're using the brakes, make sure that the A-liner isn't pulling in one direction or another, which could give you an indication that the left or right brakes have different kinds of pressure, and so they probably need to be adjusted. Um, also, the sensitivity of the brake controllers need to be adjusted so that as you're braking, that A-liner isn't braking first and causing too much force for it to potentially start skidding. So basically the brake controller and the electric brakes on the A-liner are there to assist you with stopping the A-liner. It really shouldn't go first and cause any sort of potential um, safety issues as you're towing the A-liner. Also, if you're using a wireless brake controller, now it's the time to use the duct tape. So instead of permanently mounting that um, body of the wireless brake controller to the A-liner frame, which if you haven't purchased it yet, the owner might have some issues with that, but you can temporarily secure it with some duct tape. Um, so at least you can kind of get a feel for whether the brake wireless brake controller is working as it should. So as you're towing the A-liner, you want to pay really close attention to the wheel bearings. So open up the window from your tow vehicle and make sure that you don't hear any sort of wheel bearing grinding kind of noise. You also maybe just want to be outside and as, ask the owner to go ahead and tow the A-liner and just listen really closely. So if you hear that wheel bearing noise, it might, be t it might be time to replace them and maybe an indication that the owner really didn't maintain those wheel bearings, that axle, appropriately. Finally, if you decide to purchase, it might be a good time to take that A-liner to a kind of RV service place, have the brakes checked, and just kind of do an overall check of that A-liner just to make sure that it's roadworthy. You'll also want to maybe ask the owner for their checklist. Most A-liner owners have a pretty extensive checklist um, before they go camping and when they break down just to make sure that they don't make any silly mistakes. Um, as they're getting ready to tow that A-liner. So it'd be a good idea just to get that checklist as a starting point um, for your 
A-liner owner experience. Yeah, so if you made it to the end of this video, congratulations. You are now ready to inspect an A-liner. Great job. As I've mentioned previously, I'm new to the A-liner owner experience, and in fact, I've never owned an RV. But I have spent a lot of time researching and putting this video together. But I'm probably not absolutely qualified to be giving this information. And I'd really appreciate it if there are other A-liners owners out there, especially those who have owned multiple A-liners and really are in a better position to be giving out this information. If they notice that I've got something incorrect or perhaps if I've missed something, if you would just please put a comment in this video to help other future A-liner owners out there, um, I'd really appreciate it. As always, if you got some value from this video, please consider liking it as well as subscribing to my channel. So I'll see you again very soon in the next video. And maybe it's me doing another inspection of the actual A-liner that I will soon own. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay, I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, wait